Well, it is a beautiful, beautiful morning. And the colours are just fabulous. And I'm going to go indoors because I have a coffee in there. And there's a little email that I want to read to you. Because it's a very powerful, it's a very powerful email. Because, <clears throat> because it encapsulates the change that I've gone through and the power and the magic that is Mother Earth and how she can reach out to you. She's reaching out to everybody. And I know that you feel that because it's, it's happening. This is happening, this is very real. And, and Beltana here is the manifestation of that reality. So, <clears throat> without further ado, you can see I've got all my clothes hanging up here. It looks like a Chinese laundry, as my, as my mother would say. Um, I'm going to go in. We'll go back out again, so don't vex. But I'll just show you first of all, because all three of my fur babies are in. There's Jack. Sammy Birkin who did try to get onto the bed, but was repelled by Beautykins, who, as you can see, is centre place on the bed. Because, of course, we all know she's in charge. Not a lot we can do about that. The girl's in charge. So... <clears throat> Just wandering here to collect my coffee and then go into the other room. Now, as you can see, I've got clothes drying up there as well. There's rain forecast for the weekend. Now, in here, <clears throat> so I'm not going to focus at the screen because I do like to keep the privacy of people wherever possible. So let me just get this camera held in a comfortable way. In fact, I might even just point the camera that way. There we go. I think that's better. Now, hi Colette. I understand if you don't have time to reply, but I just wanted to tell you how deeply this video struck home with me. That's the one that I posted yesterday, by the way. I watched it twice. Once when I woke up this morning and again just now. <clears throat> everything from the paint to the fire mentioned in the letter <coughs> excuse me to the urgency about change growth and tending the earth has stayed with me all day long i live in a fire prone area as well in the mountains of northern arizona united states which is home to one of the largest ponderosa forests in the world. It is, of course, properly mismanaged by the powers that be. The climate here at 7,000 feet in elevation is one of extremes, high heat sometimes, deep cold other times, dry air most times, high winds and muggy, powerful monsoon storms, and the occasional five feet of snow. It is so beautiful. I attached a photo of the view 
from a mountain called Bill Williams Mountain. Sorry, I had that placed on top of my phone, so I'm going to just replace it, okay? No. <coughs> but it requires determination here to nurture a garden. And the land herself is full of rocks and clay and more rocks and clay. I have been very slow planting trees on my property and arguing with my husband about planting more trees until today. There is something in the air and I will get to that in a moment. I heard the pain of the land, the fear of the fire, <clears throat> And more importantly, the hope in that letter. I have been in the process of change for months now and have listened to your wise words and have read and planted and felt like little pebbles of change rolling around inside. I went back to what I loved as a little girl and began growing things two years ago in a timid, hesitant way. But today was like a very gentle but powerful avalanche. I finally released some long-held fears and false needs. I feel happier and more alive than I have in years. I have begun decluttering my entire life. I am more in tune with myself and what matters most, our Mother Earth. I have long held the secret dream to be able to feed myself, my neighbourhood and the land with the garden without hurting anything and all grown in a way that leaves the earth healthier than I find it. And I want to teach others how to do the same in some way, big or small. I feel very moved today. Just from that release of the feeling of need, 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 want, want, want. It's a very hard feeling to describe properly, but it feels true, real. It is so easy to get into silly ruts and stay there because we are not always in tune with the truest parts of ourselves, our core and pass. Back to my husband. He works very long hours away from home and today out of nowhere and far away from home he sends me a message talking about how most honey has pesticide residue in it. I messaged him back and told him that one of the reasons I am so adamant about not using chemicals is because I worry about all the pollinators, not just honeybees. Well, today, the plight of our pollinators must have really touched him. I got a message back from a man who has never really thought much about ecology, always puts recycling in the other bin, which I then put in the recycling, enjoys his barbecue, his junk food and manly things. You get the picture. <laughs> well, in it was this. From now on, I will work with you on this and really pay attention to what you do in the garden and I will help you plant trees. That feels like magic at work. I just wanted to thank you for being such an inspiration to so many, for all the ripples you have made in the world, for all your effort and time every day. I have your first book and pre-ordered the second back in August. I look forward to treasuring it as well. Best wishes with all my heart, April. Well, Jack was listening to that. 
He said, yes. I understand all that, Mum. I understand what she said. Because I've seen it out there. You see... <coughs> none of this surprises me. Really. None of it does. I've lived long enough with Mother Earth to know that we are at a very special time. Not in the history of this beautiful Earth because it stretches so far back into the mists of time that we have no real grasp of her age and wisdom. But we humans are standing at this incredible crossroads, at this incredible time in our history. What we think we are really only spans a couple of thousand years. What we really are goes right back into a time that we have no concept of and we have no real understanding of. But all those people, all those people who went before us, we carry them with us. They are within our DNA. They are within the very blood that pulses through our veins. And when we think about that, and when we realise the importance of who we are, not as a particular species, but who we are in line with all of this, that is amazing. And Jack is barking because there could be a little postal van on the way up. No, you stay there, Jack. Stay there. Now, of course, as you know, with my videos, I switch on the camera. And away we go. And I don't edit anything. There's no editing, there's no, what do we call it, photoshopping. So, so what I have to say response in a way in response to that email April although I think really that you've put everything so beautifully you've told a story you've told a story about change about change in you and change in your husband in the person that you share your life with that's incredible because we are in a new age and the word that describes that new age, the word that the new age hinges upon and pivots around is simply the word change. Change. We're only beginning to discover how not just the universe but the entire cosmos affects us. We must not forget we are connected to everything. We are connected to the furthest planet of which we don't even know. We are connected to the furthest stars on what we perceive to be the edge of the universe. 
we are connected to every little spoonful of earth, of soil. We are connected to each other. We are connected to every animal, to every bee, to every pollinator, to every insect. We're connected to every little egg cup full of water that flows in the oceans. We are connected. And we are not despised by Mother Earth. You see, so many people, I feel that they just want to find an excuse to, to blame. Okay, we'll just blame the human race. You know, we've screwed everything up. We've made a complete hash of it. You know, we're not good enough to be on this planet. Look at the damage we're doing. Mother Earth would be better without us. How dare we be so arrogant? How dare we be so arrogant and say and, 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 and speak those words from Mother Earth? Mother Earth hasn't spent all this time evolving us to give up on us. No, she hasn't. But she is powering the energy that is affecting change within us. And when we suddenly realise how things are, when our eyes are opened, as you've experienced, April, both you and your husband, when that happens, we just drop all those, all those shackles that are, that are, that are pressing in on us and we open up we open up our energy to the energy of source. We embrace the divine. We all have different names for that. It doesn't matter. Words don't matter what we call the divine. But we begin to embrace the divine. We are at this incredible moment in the history of who we are. I feel blessed to be alive at this point. Change is afoot. Magic is afoot. We will call it magic because because of our limited vocabulary, because we can't really describe what this is about. There's a, a, a massive reconnection with all the people who have been before us, every single one of them, good or bad, have been instrumental in forming who we are today. For the first time, for the first time in what I understand to be the history of the human race, we are being touched by compassion for Mother Earth, by compassion for the Great Mother. And within that compassion, there lies the deepest love, a most wonderful release. We no longer have to be grown-ups. We can go back to being children. And that's why people who, 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 who suddenly, sometimes quite suddenly, get it, become happier. Because Mother Earth does not know sadness all she knows is joy and that's why her energy is so powerful and there are so many stories in so many cultures and I know within our culture we have the story of Genesis and the Garden of Eden and there's so many aspects of all those old stories which are very real 
which are very real. And prior to um, Genesis, of course, you've got the Gilgamesh stories. And you have all these incredible stories from such ancient cultures that we actually know very little about them now. And that's why we're so inquisitive about ancient history. And that's why we too make up stories. We make up stories to, to, to try to tell, to, to try to put a voice to that, to that feeling that we have inside ourselves. Very real feelings about connection. And when we finally give up the need to control, which I think myself is at the heart of deep unhappiness, but when we finally give up that need, we begin to become one with Mother Earth. We begin to feel that nurture, and in return, we nurture, we want to nurture. Do you know, there was a, <clears throat> there was a lovely song, I think it was back in the 1920s or 30s, and my, and my grandmother used to sing it, <laughs> and it goes something like, um, uh, baby your mother like she babied you back in your baby days <laughs> that's all I can remember of the song um, and you know that's, that's what loving children do when their parents get old and infirm and need to be helped, we baby them, we reassure them, we care for them, we look after them, we go way beyond what, what is expected of us in order to um, help ameliorate whatever pain or suffering there is there. Well, that, I think, is a very good, <clears throat> is a very good way of looking at, looking at what we should be doing now. We should baby our mother. The difference is, of course, that she's going to go on and on and on. There you go, little Robin. You hear what I'm saying. You've come to sing. You beautiful, beautiful little girl or boy, whatever it is you are.
there you go. Let Mrs. Robin have the last word. Blessings to you all. And thank you, April, for sharing all that with us. Have a wonderful day, everybody. <laughs>